It is no secret to any makeup user that you just don't like everything you try. Ah! Ah! Some things are just, you know, maybe not something you would prefer or something you wouldn't wear all the time. And then there are some things that you just most definitely would never buy again and they did not work for you at all. And so that is what this video is all about. Um, I've kind of split it up into face, eyes, and lips and chosen a couple things from each category that were really um, fails for me in the past year. It's really important to keep in mind that, you know, these are my experiences with these products. Products. It's not to say they couldn't be, you know, a great product for you, but um, for me, they didn't work well enough. And hopefully, as with any review that I do, I'll explain them well enough to where you know whether um, you agree with me or if maybe you've got a different skin type or a different preference altogether. And you'll be able to go from there and figure out whether this might be a fail for you too thing for face, and this is sort of a genre of products that I've found, at least in the American drugstores, and it is the BB cream. I'm holding up this one from L'Oreal, it said Magic Skin Beautifier, and I did a whole video comparing four different drugstore BB creams, and the bottom line was that they had claims of like perfecting your skin and, you know, instantly beautifying the skin or whatever, and really they were nothing more than a tinted moisturizer. In CoverGirl's case, they just repackaged what was was sold formerly as a tinted moisturizer, started calling it a BB cream now just to get in on the craze. You know, people want to try BB cream. I feel like I wouldn't mind these drugstore BB creams as much if they didn't seem so, like, deceptive, I guess. Like, for example, this one from L'Oreal. It says to, it will prime, perfect, hydrate, and correct. This comes out, like, white, and it has the little beads in it, and then it adjusts to your skin. Adjusts. I mean, it's gonna be the color it's gonna be, basically, but um, it's, it's not enough for, like, to be your moisturizer. Um, I don't quite get the priming aspect because it doesn't leave any sort of texture that, that totally smooths. Um, it certainly does not perfect because there's just no coverage in it really and it correcting, I mean, it's not coming close to what a concealer might do. So I, it's just an example of that. These were marketed more as what they are, which is simply a tinted moisturizer. If that, this I wouldn't even call a moisturizer. I would call this like zero coverage foundation. I don't know. And I know people talk about better BB creams that are out there. Maybe it's high-end brands. Maybe they are Asian brands. While I'm on my rant about products that promise perfect skin and don't give it to you, um, I would say the Maybelline Dream Nude Air Foam was one of my big foundation disappointments this year. It says air infused foundation, nude perfect finish. Um, and basically this is something you shake up and it comes out like a total foam. I'll show you here in case you're curious. Boom. Uh, <laughs> you can see in the little variation of this tone from my own skin tone, it like it tints the skin, but it does not cover anything. This is claiming to be your foundation. I mean, it says foundation on the can, so I don't get I it. I feel like people might be attracted to this because they're like, ooh, something new, air foam, it's in a can. It's kind of like a little gimmick to, to draw you I in. Mean, this, in my opinion, doesn't perform much more like a foundation than one of these does. Product from e.l.f. and it's one of their blushes. I have it in blushing here and it looks like kind of a decent shade of pink. Um, there's a lot of glitter in it and it barely shows up. That's the story on this blush in a nutshell. Um, they used to have their really affordable blushes. They were like one dollar and the little top slid off of them and I actually liked a lot of those. Here I think the price may be one dollar more and this particular shade anyway. I'm like, what happened? You know, that does not show That's up. probably one of my biggest makeup frustrations is paying for product that does nothing for if you. If you do want to try a good e.l.f. blush, their studio line, which is three dollars, are, I think, amazing. This is one of those blushes where, you know, even on your finger in a very opaque, concentrated swatch, it's like it, it really doesn't show up much. Sheer that out with a brush, you're, it really doesn't show. Up. 
guys. Um, this was a product I was initially very intrigued about. It's from It Cosmetics and it's called Hello Bright Eyes and it says Silk Anti-Aging Waterproof Brightener. So this is like a product, a pencil, that you could put on your inner rim and I guess it would take away the look of any redness there and just make your eyes look wider, more wide awake. And the way this comes is you get one that has, um, that says matte brightener so it's just like creamy and then one has sort of a pearly look and you know you could use these on your waterline you could go around your inner corner um, the issue with this is is anything that's going to go on your waterline needs to go on in my opinion very gently very smooth I mean you're getting right in there next to your eyeball sometimes we lose sight of the fact that no pun intended uh, that when you're getting something right there on the waterline like you shouldn't have to struggle because that's a very delicate area and these I just couldn't believe how dry they were. I mean, I'm having to go fairly with a lot of pressure on my hand to get a swatch out of these. And this, this other one, the, the matte one here, like I can't even make it show up. Like it, there's a little chunk of it on there. Something that is a great alternative to this if you are looking for that eye brightener thing. Um, the Tarte Emphasize sells one and it glides on like nobody's business. Like one swipe and I mentioned that in the Emily Awards. I mean really, really outstanding product. Next up, uh, you got the Top 10 Eyeshadow Collection from Hard Candy. Um, this was something that I saw and thought, ooh, this is going to be super cool, but it was kind of a dud. And the reason why I thought it would be good is because I am such a fan of the Hard Candy Baked Eyeshadow Duos, the little round ones with two shades. I mean, I think those are absolutely awesome. So I kind of thought Hard Candy knew what they were doing with eyeshadows. Sorry about the mirror. Um, but the colors seem actually kind of pretty there, you know? But when you start swatching on these, you start to see that it's either like no color payoff or a very, very flaky finish. Very weird place for me to swatch it. But I do swatches of it and it's like there's an odd sort of clumpiness that happens. And I've had that happen with some cheap eyeshadows. A few of the shades in here are pretty good. And then you hit a few where it's like it's got this clumpiness. And when you try to smooth it out, it's a little bit hard. So if I can give you an alternative, you know of a comparable product I'm trying to do that and if you're interested in hard candy definitely the baked duos are the way to go next up uh, Too Faced better than false lashes this is a lash extension system it says nylon lash extension like little furry dry fibers okay so there is no cream binding this together we're gonna first apply a little bit of the plain traditional mascara and then the thought is that those little furry parts uh, <laughs> I don't know what to call them but those extensions will then stick to it, lengthen out the lash. Then you finish it off with another coat of the black to cover all that up. And the first time I used this, I thought, wow, this length is amazing. You know, I really, really liked it. But this system is such that I feel like with multiple uses, I was seeing more and more clumpy, thick, spidery lashes. I was seeing, actually seeing these fibers more. I mean, you want those to just kind of work in with the lash and end up being a pretty sleek, long lash. But I mean, it looked really Really weird. I think part of the problem was the fact that once this was coating the lash and getting more of those loose fibers on it, then you're putting the brush back in here. Those fibers are getting back in with the formula. And then when you use this more and more times, it becomes a thicker mascara than it was designed to be. A nicely designed and applied false lash, in my mind, is pretty incomparable to any mascara I've tried. I mean, that is gonna give you the best look, and this mascara, I mean, thanks for trying, but it's not there. Next up for lips, it's one of those products where it's like, wow, great concept, not so good delivery, and it's these Benefit Ultra Plush glosses. Um, they're made to coordinate with their box powders. So for example, right here I have Sugar Bomb, um, they have Dallas, they have Coralista, I think in different ones. They look really good. Like I would think that's a shade I would really like, for example. For me, these just go on so sheer and end up feeling kind of like um, a gloss with a big lack of pigment on the lips. I thought the one um, called Dallas was 
probably a little bit better. It was a little deeper. Um, it did give off some color. But for a high-end price tag to give me something where, you know, it's a gloss, it doesn't feel overly sticky, that's nice, but it's not especially long wearing and it doesn't give off a lot of color. It's just kind of like I can find a zillion drugstore glosses that do more for me than that. If you got into an Ulta or a Sephora, you could try them out for yourself and see what you thought, but I was just kind of disappointed with that line. And next up, I hate to do it to your Revlon. I love so many of Revlon's lip products, but I think that standard, that high standard in my mind, um, this product could not hold up to it. And it's the Revlon Color Stay Ultimate Suede. Um, these lipsticks, and I got several because I just figured, you know, they're Revlon. They'll be good. Um, not so much. These basically are a rather dry lipstick. I loved some of the shades they put out. The way I make them work now is if I want to use that particular shade, I'll top it with a gloss to make it feel more comfortable. Other people have suggested putting a lip balm underneath. Here's the thing. When you put it on, like as I swatch it now, I'm thinking, ooh, nice creamy swatch, you know, and at first it seems fine, but it does not take long for these glosses to really feel kind of dry and a little bit uncomfortable on the lips. Definitely not in line with, you know, some of those more moisturizing, hydrating lip products, which are coming out left and right right now because I think brands have discovered people like so that. Those are my uh, top makeup fails, if you want to call them that. Those are my biggest fails of 2012 in the makeup world. Please don't be offended if uh, I talked about not liking something that really ended up working for you. I mean, if it worked for you, I think that's great. Sometimes people get really, I don't know, a little bit hostile about, you know, a product, even if it's something I like and then you didn't like, or the other way around, it seems like people get very adamant about their product. Bottom line, I mean, it's makeup we're talking about here, and this is one person's opinion, so take it for what it is. And many people wanted to see this video, so um, I hope it was informative for you. Uh, thanks for watching all the Emily Awards videos. Those are where you go to see some really great products, in my opinion, and um, I will see you next time. Bye.